So it's the same one, same engine as on the Vulcan, basically, but developed to give at least twice the power of the Vulcan engine. And this is a, a twin spool engine. Uh, and if you look at what it shows up there, it shows that um, you've got... That's the, that's the engine up there, and there are twin spools, so you have a... Um, a compressor at the front doesn't look like that at all. It's a seven stage compressor, and you have rotating and then static uh, blades, and then rotating static, seven lots of them on each of those. So it looks as if everything's turning round. It doesn't, doesn't work like that. You have to have static stators in between. Anyway, the front one drives the rear, uh, sorry, is driven by the rear turbine. So the air coming out the back drives a turbine, which drives the compressor at the front end. And then the second one is driven by the, the front turbine. So there are two turbines following, the, um, following after where the fuel is put in. Um, and um, so it's compressed, the fuel is put in, you then go through the, the high-speed turbine, high-speed and high-pressure turbine, uh, and then into the low speed turbine and it then comes out the back and the low speed turbine is controlled by this which is the primary nozzle you can see all the pistons on each side uh, which close up and change the size of the nozzle and that's the uh, the way in which the low speed turbine is controlled the high speed turbine is mainly controlled by the amount of fuel you put in so, so you've got more or less separation between the two. Fuel, doing, uh, fuel making uh, the high-speed one go faster or slower, and the angle of these making the low-speed low one go higher or slower. And then finally, you come out of there, and you can, you've got air coming all over these, uh, all over the outside of the engine, keeping it cool. And before this nozzle, it all joins in. And in there, you'll see a ring where, um, yeah, that ring is where you pump fuel out to get reheat. So fuel goes into there, and then the actual, these turn into expanding, an expanding nozzle, so they will come up and down so they're like that and they give a surface on which more thrust is produced because you've got this big flame coming out the back, which is increasing the pressure and giving you more thrust. And that, that uh, reheat is used in two cases, once for takeoff and then once for transonic up, because you want to go from about Mark 0.9 up to Mark 1.1 pretty quickly. And the reason for that is that um, flying at sonic speed is very messy it's draggy there's a big spike of drag basically because there are little shock waves happening all over the place and once you get up above mark 1.1 they all coalesce into a single less um, uh, less draggy shock waves uh, so your drag goes up a bit and then down and then, then it still carries on going up. I mean, basically, your drag is very high when you get up to Mark II, but you miss out the, the, the bit there. But you also make it a bit nicer for the passengers because although they feel the kick in the back as you go through the, the speed of sound, if you, didn't, if you went slowly through that bit, it would be like going over cobbles for a, for a while. And... You know, you'd be shaking, the, the, and you don't want that. You don't don't want to upset their champagne. So, so you just ha you just say we're going supersonic. It'll be a few seconds, boom, and and then then they can drink their champagne again, and it'll be fine. But uh, they probably.